Okay, hi there, welcome to the second in our series of updated videos uh, looking at aspects of the balance of payments. This is a key macro uh, area topic for you as part of A-Level and IB. In the first video, we focused on the trade balance. In this video, let's spend a few minutes thinking about the current account of the balance of payments. Now, the balance of payments represents or tries to capture and measure all transactions between residents of one nation and non-residents during a period, for example, a year. It tries to measure the value of trade, exports and imports, investment incomes, all kinds of financial and trade transactions across national borders. And there are three main elements to the accounts, the current account, the capital account and the financial account. Now, from an A-level and IB perspective, Parts one and three are the most important, but we will have a little video on the capital account as well. So let's think about, in this video, let's focus on the current account. Now the current account of the balance of payments represents payments for trade in goods and services. We covered that in the first video, plus net flows of primary and secondary income. You do need to be familiar, if you want to smash, smash these exams, you need to be familiar with the main component of the current account. There are four. The trade balance in goods, the trade balance in services, we covered that in the previous video, net primary income and net secondary income. Net just means inflow minus outflow, uh, credit minus debit. Many, many students actually confuse the current account with the government's budget balance. I want you to confirm to me, I want you to say to me, you will never confuse it. We're not talking about the fiscal balance here. We're talking about the current balance, current account balance for a country in terms of their external payments. So we looked at this in the last video. This was the UK trade balance in goods and services measured this time as a percentage of GDP. And you can see we have a trade deficit in goods shown by the blue line, a trade deficit in services. Put the two together, you get the net or total trade in goods and services, a deficit of, a deficit of about 1.5% of GDP. And that's really half of the current account. But then we have to think about primary income. So primary income is basically a measure of the balance between resident and non-resident income. Uh, it tries to capture those monetary flows across borders from investment incomes. I might have put some money into Google shares, and I might get a dividend that comes back. I might own some property in Berlin, for example, and I get some rent income that comes back. I might have some interest in a bank account in Holland, and that money might come back into the UK. So I'm looking to see what the, the yield, the return on my overseas investments are. That money coming back into the UK counts as a credit item on the current account. Equally, equally of course, there are lots of overseas entities, businesses, investors who have assets owned in the UK, the profits from investments in the UK, they flow back out of the UK, they're counted as a debit item on the account. Primary income also includes the pay for cross-border workers, so-called remittances between migrants. And in many countries, this is now many billions of pounds and dollars every year. It is a significant primary income flow, affecting both gross national income per capita and a country's balance of payments on the current account. Here's the figure for the UK. Now, actually, there's been a little bit of a turnaround. The UK now runs a deficit on the net primary income. There's more money flowing out of the UK from foreign investment and things in the UK uh, than comes from our overseas assets. So in fact, the UK now runs a primary income deficit. For several years, we ran a, we ran a bit of a surplus. Second year income. Secondary income is, is the current transfers between residents and non-residents. So it's not, a, it's not a return from an investment, it's a pure transfer. What do we mean by that? Well, foreign aid is a transfer from, for example, the UK government to a country who, that's the recipient of aid. The contributions that the UK makes to the United Nations counts as a secondary income transfer out of the UK. And Britain, prior to leaving, the European Union, and perhaps a few more years hence, is a net contributor to the European Union budget. That counts as a negative secondary balance. In fact, the UK has had a secondary income deficit since the early 1960s. We're a net giver of aid, 
0.7% of our GNI goes in aid, and we make quite significant transfers. We, fund, we transfer funds to the European Union and also to the United Nations. So if we add everything together, does the UK economy run a current account deficit or surplus? In fact, the answer is we run a deficit. Last year, the deficit was of about £95 billion, just under £2 billion a week, which was just over 4% of our GDP. And in fact, it's over 20 years now since the UK economy last ran a current account surplus. Can you see that from this chart? What this chart does, it puts together the trade balance in there in blue, the primary income balance in a lovely shade of orange, and the secondary income balance, balance in one of the shades of grey. And you can see that all three items now are negative. Of course, we have a trade surplus in services. That's in, built, built into the blue figure. So Britain has been running quite chunky, quite significant current account deficits of in excess of 3% of GDP in each of the last eight years. There's a figure so just taking out. So just what I've just is basically just put that all those figures together in a line chart. Uh, and you can see the UK's current account deficit as a measure of uh, GDP, percentage of GDP. That's basically our external payments with the rest of the world in trade, primary income and secondary income. We are a, we run an external deficit on the current account. So too do other countries. The United States has a big current account deficit, but countries such as Germany and South Korea uh, and Japan and Norway, they run big current account surpluses. Here's just a little hint of those trade imbalances. The UK continues to run the biggest current account deficit as a share of our GDP among the G7 nations, the group of seven nations. Germany, Japan and Italy are significant external surplus countries, so-called creditor nations. And France, the United States and the UK are debtor nations in the sense that they're not really making their external accounts balance on the current account. And the UK's current account deficit is the biggest. OK, so do you think you get the current account? Different component parts. Hopefully that uh, that made it relatively straightforward. And uh, we'll see where our exploration of balance of payments goes next.